Hey, good morning YouTube. Mark here, and uh, as you can see, I've got a bunch of stuff laid out on my table. And uh, what's going on is I'm leaving for a road trip here in the next couple of days, and uh, I just kind of want to show how I pack and what I pack when I go out on these uh, trips. Now this is going to be a cross-country trip, or I should say semi-cross-country trip. Being that I live in Wisconsin, it's not coast to coast, you know. But I'm all going all the way down to uh, Nevada for the uh, VRA West Rally. And uh, it's in Mesquite, Nevada, which is a little bit north of Las Vegas. So I've got a long trip. It's going to take me, I think I'm taking six days to get there. And then I'll be there for a couple of days, and then I'm taking seven days to come back home. So let me show you what I got going on. Alright, first up, got to have my helmet. Nevada is a helmet required state, so I got to have it. And in fact, that's the only state that I know that I'm going through where it's actually required. So, got my helmet. This is a HJC IS33 II. So this is the second generation of this helmet. I actually did have the IS33 on my uh, trip to Oregon last year. I bought this brand new for this year. And I, I'm liking it a lot. I like it better than the uh, than the original IS33. So um, the the head shape, you know, the the crown shape in here is a little different, and the uh, the full face shield here is a little bit different. It actually drops down a little bit farther than the original, so you don't get a breeze hitting your chin. At least that's what an issue I was having. But this helmet has a. Uh, an integrated you know sun shield and that's actually got two levels to it there's one and that's two it's not much of a difference you're only talking maybe you know a half an inch difference but uh, uh, I like that a lot um, another modification that they made to this is that when you retract the shades back they don't snap back really hard it's actually got a bit of a spring there to keep it from uh, from uh, going back too fast and actually breaking. So I do like that. There's a little vent here at the top. It does have a, a quick buckle release, which is really handy when you're wearing gloves, I tell you. All right, so that's my helmet. Next up are my boots. I've had these boots for over 10 years now. These are Milwaukee brand boots. As you can see, they're a high top boot. Um, the only thing I've ever done to these is replace the laces. <laughs> um, tread is looking really good on these yet. So yeah, I mean, these are holding up well. There's double zippered. So they've got a zipper on that side and a zipper on this side. That way I can leave them all laced up. I slip my boot in, just pull up the zippers and I'm ready to go. Good boot, comfortable. And uh, yeah, they've held up well over the years. I like these a lot. Um, let's see, next up, let's do some gloves. These are some Tourmaster gloves. I don't remember exactly which model of gloves these are, but I did change them a little bit because these were supposed to be a, <laughs> a waterproof yet breathable glove and they weren't breathable at all when you put your hand in there my hands just started sweating immediately there was no airflow through them at all and what it was was inside the liner here was a very very thin uh, plastic liner and i just pulled the plastic out so the uh the inner lining back in and now it, it's it's a good glove it's definitely breathable. It's no longer waterproof because I took that plastic out, but I like them a lot more now that I've done that. Um, it velcros tight around the wrist. And what I like about these is that it comes up the wrist. It's not way down here. So when you're riding and your jacket it comes up, you're not going to get a sunburn <laughs> in this one little area. Um, I've also had gloves where it was had a big opening right in through here 
and I would actually get sunburned in that little spot. So yeah, I kind of like that these actually cover the whole hand. They fit well, it moves well. Um, I don't think these are uh, touch screen compatible for your phones. No, I'm not getting anything on my phone. So yeah, unfortunately if you're using your phone, you gotta take your glove off to touch it and then you can put your glove back on. All right, so these are my warm weather gloves. Not much insulation, a little bit, but not bad. Usually I can wear these in about uh, 50 degrees and above. Now, I'm also taking a second pair of gloves and these are my cold weather riding gloves. And actually, I just bought these from a local Harley shop, uh, mainly because my, uh, my metric shop that I go to for uh, fixing up my Kawasaki. Um, they also sell Yamaha, Honda, and uh, Suzuki as well. But uh, nice cold weather glove, good insulation in it. Um, these are, like I said, they are insulated. They're water resistant, wind resistant. And uh, there's a couple of ways to snug them up. There's a strap here on the wrist that you can pull a little bit tighter if you wish. Usually for my big hands, I don't need to do that. I actually try to keep them as loose as possible. And then you got drawstrings here, so you can tighten it down around your around your forearm and wrist. Again, that's not something I usually do. Mainly because once I get my jacket on here, it actually fits fairly snug around the jacket. Um, on the thumb here, don't know if you can see that, um, I'll bring it up to the camera a little bit closer. <laughs> it's actually got like a little bit of uh, rubber on the thumb. And what that's for is when you're riding in the rain, you can use your thumb, clear off your visor while you're riding. Usually I would just use my hand, you know, use this part of my hand. But uh, now I've actually got a, uh, a little squeegee on the thumb. <laughs> kind of like that idea. Don't know if I'll actually use it, but I like the idea. So these are my cold weather riding gloves. These are basically the gloves I'll grab when it's below 50 degrees. Um, next up, this is a neoprene face mask. It closes with a Velcro on the back. Um, it's okay, but because I wear glasses, when you have this on, you get a lot of moisture from your breath that comes up from between your nose and the mask and it fogs up your glasses. It fogs up the glasses really quick. I mean, there's holes in it that uh, your breath is supposed to escape out of, but it just doesn't all go off through those holes. So it's gotta go somewhere, comes right up between your nose and the mask, into your glasses and it fogs up immediately. I only really ever use this in extreme conditions and I'm talking probably less than 40 degrees then I'll grab this um, when I was coming back from Oregon last year uh, I got hit with that uh, snowstorm on the Beartooth Highway I did put this on uh, helps keep my chin a little bit warmer and uh, the tip of my nose a little warmer but again that issue you know, I could only go so far, and then I had to stop and uh, let my uh, glasses defog. So that's my neoprene mask. Now this I'll wear, um, it's another cold weather item. It's basically a dicky. So you just slip it on over your head like that, and it covers your neck. You can pull it up a little bit to cover your chin. Then uh, usually I have the helmet strap coming down underneath the chin. This will go over that as well. And then the front here is actually windproof. So with my uh, leather jacket even, it's got a big uh, deep V-neck on the jacket. So this is really good to have 
with that jacket. That way I don't get cold air hitting my chest and stuff like that. Um, a lot of uh, uh, high collar jackets, you could probably get away with just uh, just this neck part here and not have to worry about this part. But uh, I do like this a lot. I've taken this on trips where I've ridden as low as, uh, well, in the mid 30s, maybe actually into the 20s now that I think about it. And it's worked really well. Uh, I'm glad I have this along. Um, now, granted, because I'm going down south, I'm not expecting to get a whole lot of uh, cold weather. But at the same time, I'm going through Colorado and northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin. Iowa, you know, stuff like that, and, you know, I, I might wake up Saturday morning when I leave, and it could be below 40. It's just the way it is around here this time of year. So, I'm definitely going to take that. Okay, let me show you what else I got going on. Alright, this is my uh, textile jacket. Again, it's another Harley brand. Uh, the only reason I really bought this jacket is because I got it on sale. Uh, it was a, I think it was a $70 jacket at the time, and I got it for like 20 bucks. No joke. I, <laughs> it was on their clearance rack. Fits well. The zippers have been working great. Again, I've had this jacket for about 10 years. It's got Velcro on the sleeves, so I can keep the wind from blowing up, but th this is a textile jacket, so the wind just goes right through it, but uh, I find that the Velcro here actually helps it from riding up the arm and stuff like that, so yeah, those I use every time I get on the bike. Um, it's got a couple of inside pockets. Inside this pocket, I've got a little bottle of Carmex here. This is a sun blocking uh, lip balm, so it's got an SPF of 15. I also do carry dental floss in my jacket just because <laughs> With my teeth whenever I stop to eat I almost always get food stuck in it So I always carry dental floss just to get the food out And then there's also a pocket on the other side Which has nothing in it at least not right now anyway I'll probably stick something in there while I'm riding and then in these pockets, I've got my keys. I think I got some uh, loose change in here too. Just, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, 34 cents. <laughs> and then in the other pocket, I've just got a small little plastic bag. You just never know when you're gonna need a, a plastic bag. So I do keep one with me just in case for some reason something pops up, they're light, they're, you know, they weigh absolutely nothing, and they're just handy to have every once in a while. So, that's my uh, lightweight jacket, my textile. I like it a lot. This patch here is from the uh, last space shuttle launch. My friend Berto and I and my son Tim went down to go see that. Um, this patch here is the Rustic Roads program here in Wisconsin. Great program. There's like a hundred and I think there's like 114 roads throughout the state. If you ride 10 of them and uh, document it, you get a patch. And then this one here, I am an iron butt rider, so I've done my thousand miles in 24 hours. So that's what that patch is. And I don't have any patch here, and I don't have a patch on the back. Although I am wanting to get a uh, chapter patch and put it on the back of this one. Okay, this here is my leather jacket. This is what I use for all the uh, colder days. And cold days to me are, well, I'll wear this up to close to 70 degrees. And then after that it gets too warm, I gotta wear my textile. But uh, I've had this again when I bought the bike, so I've had this jacket for 10 years now. It's got zippered cuffs, so it stays nice and tight. It's got two pockets up here. It's got a pocket here, and two on the sides down here. 
Now this pocket here, you might see this cord. This goes to my uh, Bluetooth receiver. Um, this is what I use to listen to music while I'm riding. So the Bluetooth receiver is Bluetooth to my phone. We got headphones plugged into these. These are not just standard headphones either. These are noise canceling uh, construction ear plug earphones. These will, uh, these are 24 decibel earplugs, I believe. And I put these in, put my helmet over top, and uh, it blocks out a lot of the wind noise and everything. So yeah, these are really nice. I like them a lot. Whole system, Bluetooth receiver, and the plugs only run about 40 bucks. Also in this pocket, um, I got like a dental picks. Again, I've got uh, issues with my teeth where they just like having food in between them. In this pocket here, <laughs> again, same thing as my other jacket, dental floss, and uh, the Carmex Sunproof or SPF 15 Sunblock Chapstick. In this pocket here, I do keep a tire gauge. You never know. You might need it someday. Not the easiest to get on this little pocket though. That clip is actually really tight. And uh, that's all I've got in there. Now I might stick my wallet in here or uh, something else. So. Uh, I do use that pocket quite often. My phone, I'll put it in here sometimes. And then uh, I don't have much of anything in my pockets. I got my bike key in one. I do have a uh, kickstand pad on another. You just never know if you got pulled over to the side of the road and it's loose gravel, your kickstand could bury into it or maybe it's soft dirt or mud. Kickstand pad. Um, kind of Got some rope tied on it. That way I put the pad on the ground. I hook this around my uh, my uh, my handle. And uh, yeah, it just keeps it from going away. And that way too, I just grab the rope, pull it up, instead of bending all the way over to the ground to get this off the ground, just grab the rope, pull it up, wind it up, and you're ready to go. This is a uh, Kawasaki brand jacket, and it's a Kawasaki Vulcan jacket. So on the pockets here, there's the uh, Vulcan logo. Uh, not one on this one, but there is one on this one. And there's also one on the back. So yep, this is a uh, Kawasaki Vulcan jacket. I like this a lot. It's been very nice, very comfortable. Now you can see how the uh, the neck of ease down that's why I have this so when I'm riding in the really colder temperatures I'm not getting wind hitting me here okay I put this on underneath my jacket and it protects my chest next up are my chaps um, good quality leather they do have a single pocket Um, I've never used the pocket. Uh, I suppose you could put your key in there, but I'm always afraid it's going to fall out, so I don't bother. It's not very deep. You know, my fingers can fit in it, but that's about it. Um, zippering up the legs, snaps at the feet, fully adjustable with the uh, leather strapping here. Uh, this is a uh, FMC brand, uh, first manufacturing company. Um, I bought these in a store years ago that has uh, since closed up. So even if I wanted to replace these, I wouldn't be able to go there to get it. <laughs> so I've had these for, well, Again, since I pretty much own the bike, so I've had them for a good 10 years. They're holding up really well, no cracks, no tears. 
no wear spots, really nice. Okay, so this is my trunk bag. This goes on the very back of the bike, right on the uh, luggage rack. Um, I've had this for, I think around seven years. Um, don't use it a whole lot. I've definitely used it more now that I joined the VRA because I go to the national rallies and stuff. But uh, it works pretty well. It doesn't lock or anything like that. Um, there are just simple clips here that just hold the lid down. Um, these tie-off points, um, there is a, uh, a roll bag that goes on here. Let me show you that. This here is the roll bag that can sit on top. And uh, you can just clip these in to the D-rings, just like that. Then you got one, you know, D-rings on the back and these little hooks here. So it can be really snapped down tight and it doesn't move, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, however, I've been noticing that as I'm riding more, um, reducing how much I actually need to take on trips. So right now, I've gotten to the point where I really don't even need this, so I took it off. Uh, I think this is an X-Element brand uh, bag. Um, I don't even think they make this particular uh, model anymore. And uh, I mean, they got things that are close, but not quite. I've got the, uh, the Flying Eagle on the front here. You know, no studdings or anything like that, as you can see. Two side pockets, a front pocket, and then of course, the main pocket opens up like that. Okay, so, first off, let's go through the front pocket. This here is a gift that my wife gave me for Christmas. It is a passport to the national parks, and there's like, I think there's close to 400 I think it's like 399 national parks but what you do is you go to the visitor center of the national parks and they will actually stamp this for you and it will have the park name and the date that you were there so you can actually have a uh, documented stamped recording of when you were at that national park I have I think 15 national parks that I'm visiting just on this trip alone so Thank you, dear. I love this gift. Um, also in this front pocket, I have my spare batteries for the camera, the GoPro. Um, I've also got backup um, memory cards in here, SD cards. Ziploc bag, so it's waterproof. Um, the only other thing that I have in here right now um, these are my hotel reservations, so uh, um, as I'm going along, I can take this. Um, I've also got an app on my phone that uh, has all the information for my uh, for my hotel stays on the app. So even if I lose these, I have them on my phone as well. Grab another drink of coffee here. All right, let's move on to the side pockets. Uh, this one here, it's got a, this is just a cover for when it rains. I can cover the, the entire bag. I've never actually used this and I've been debating on whether or not I want to just take it out of the, uh, the system and have a, another available pocket. But of course, it's going to be one of those things that once you remove it, it's the one time you're going to need it. So, so far, I'm just leaving it with the bag. Leaving it with the bag in that pocket. Um, the bag itself is pretty waterproof. I've driven in some pretty heavy rains and I've never had a problem with water getting inside. The uh, front lid has this nice big deep uh, lip that covers over. So water really does not get in here, not very easily anyway. The only time that I've ever had moisture problems in here is because I put damp clothes in here. And really that's the only issue I've ever had. Moving on to this side pocket, right now it's empty because this is what I put in it. These, this little bag here 
has all my charging cables and USB cords and everything that I need for my electronics all in this little bag. It fits in my pocket here. And just like that. Okay, so inside the main pocket, I have my laptop. Um, luckily, mine's actually small enough. I can actually get it to fit in here pretty well. So yeah, I've had no problems with that. And yes, I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, also in here will be this bag. It's gonna go right down the side here. I just didn't put it in yet. Um, what this bag is, it's all my toiletries. This is an actual uh, old shaving kit that my dad had. Um, of course, the, his shaving stuff is out of there. I've got sunscreen here. I've got, uh, uh, I call this my ears, nose, and throat bag. It's my uh, cleaning kit for my glasses. I got more uh, uh, sunproof uh, Carmex stick in here. And I've also got Q-tips for cleaning up my ears. I got my shaving cream, razor. Got my medication in here, ibuprofen, uh, Benadryl, and some uh, antacid type stuff. I guess I got my sunscreen in here. I'm thinking about moving this somewhere else though, just so it's handy and readily available for what I'm driving. Um, it might go in maybe this pouch. This one's full because of the pack, and that one's full because of the other uh, the uh, charger cables. So I might see if I can try to fit it in here. Um, I also have this. This is a, a saddle soap. And it's for cleaning leathers and stuff like that. And uh, that's actually why I don't have any uh, um, rain gear. Um, a lot of people are afraid to ride in the rain in leather. If you treat your leather with something, then you shouldn't have a problem with water after that. Um, I've ridden <laughs> every year I get caught in rain. I've never once had rain gear and my leathers are holding up great. So get yourself some saddle soap, treat your leathers and they'll treat you right. All right, next thing up in my bag, <laughs> it's just a garbage bag, a full-size standard garbage bag. This is for my dirty clothes. When I'm wearing, you know, and the next day, I just throw the stuff in here, I wrap it all up nice and tight, and I actually get scented ones. That way, my whole bag doesn't start smelling like dirty clothes. So, get something that is scented, treated, arm and hammered, or something like that, something that's gonna absorb the odor and uh, your bag won't start smelling like your dirty clothes. So, simple, lightweight, garbage bag. Okay, so this is how I do my clothes. That there is two days worth of clothes. Let me show you how I do it. Got one pair of jeans. One pair of underpants, two pairs of socks, and two shirts. One, two days, two days worth of pants. Yes, you can wear pants more than one day. Did you know that? Um, socks, I always gotta have clean socks. I can't put on dirty socks. And yes, only one pair of underwear because you know what? If you wipe properly, you don't get streaks in your underwear, really. So, I've got that, and I've got, here's another set, and here's another set. So, between what I've got in the bag alone, I've got six days worth of clothes in here, plus the clothes that I'll have on when I leave. So, and I'm also going to have another shirt and a pair of socks with that set. So I actually have eight days worth of clothing here. And I know what you're thinking. Mark, the bag's completely full. How are you going to get all your riding gear, the gloves, the dicky, the jackets, the chaps, how are you going to get it all in there? Well, duh, they don't go in here. I've actually got 
saddlebags on my motorcycle and that's what I keep uh, my riding gear in. Now um, let me show you something else. These are actually what I use to strap down my bag. Um, these are a very simple, you know, it, it's not, it's a ratchet system, but it doesn't use a ratchet, okay? They just pull. So you pull it tight. And then you just hold down the, the little clip thing and you can pull it the other way. But uh, I've used these many times on trips and I've never had an issue with them slipping or anything. In fact, one of the things that I've had is I usually, once I get it cinched down tight, I have a lot of extra length here that's just kind of blowing around and I've done things I've, I've kind of twisted it up like this and and put it on there and held it together with a with an alligator clip but I think what I'm going to do so I don't have to worry about it anymore I'm actually just going to cut these and let maybe about uh, six to ten inches of length here and uh, yeah, I just get rid of it because this is the only thing I use these straps for and if it's such a, a, a specific thing that I'm doing with it, well then I might as well just uh, get rid of the length that I don't need. So all I do is I just take the S hook, put it on the D ring, go down the back, go around the uh, backrest, slip it over the backrest and then under it. Uh, then I also go under the uh, the luggage rack come up and uh, I'll hook it onto this D-ring here and then I'll pull it tight and uh, yeah that's how it holds on and it does really well. So basically this strap here crosses over down to this ring and then this strap here will cross over and hook onto that D-ring. That way they're crossed, it's more secure and then I've also got a third strap which I use These straps here will go over the, uh, the backrest and uh, I'll use this D-ring and this D-ring with this strap and really just hunker it down nice and tight. Um, these here are Velcro so I can just put them on over the backrest and uh, that holds it okay but not great. So I just like the security of having another strap available. To hold everything in place. So I might add a couple other little things to this system. Um, I might throw in my slippers or, or a pair of sandals, just something to walk around in so I got something other than my riding boots to wear, you know. Um, but other than that, this is a great system. It's been working really well for me and uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Well, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching and uh, I'll see you on the road.